Yo, what's going on, man? It's Project X. Here, coming with y'all with, with an overdue video. Long overdue. Just woke up, by the way, so don't mind me. You know, I'm looking a little bit crazy right now. Yeah, man, I don't really know what I'm going to name this video yet, but somewhere along the lines of, like, frequently asked questions for producers or things you've always wanted to ask an industry producer. Or something, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, whatever you want to call it. So one of the questions I always get is, like, when should I need a lawyer? When should a producer need a lawyer? How do I go about getting one? I don't really have money. Here's the thing. Here's what I need y'all to do. I need y'all to do a little bit of research, find some music entertainment, lawyers or whatever it is through Instagram, who seems like a reliable person. You know what I'm saying? Reach out to them. Honestly, you don't want to reach out to them yet until you have something that you want to clear up, like a placement or something or contract. Then in that case, you would want to reach out to a lawyer. Let them know like, okay, listen, I got this project or I got this contract I just got in. This is my first time clearing a song. I just really need some help. Cause you don't need money up front to have a lawyer, bro. Like. They'll work with you and then you can pay them after you uh after you clear the record, give them give them a percentage of whatever your advance is or whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? So these lawyers are willing to work with you, man. You don't gotta have upfront cash to, in order to have a lawyer to clear your shit, man. That's you know what I'm saying? It's one thing. Make sure you do your research, make sure you go find these lawyers and fuck with one, bro. A whole nother thing. Some of these people think uh they need a manager, this and that. Honestly, bro, as a producer, you're capable of managing all your own shit. Unless you're like somebody as big as Metro or Southside who actually needs some management because, you know, there's such a top tier producer. They got so much motion going on. They can't manage everything. Let their manager do the business. They just create, you know what I'm saying? But if you're just coming up, bro, chances are you just need a lawyer, bro. You know what I'm saying? You just need a lawyer that's going to look over your, your contracts and, um, I know a lot of these producers go around using their little friends as like a manager or whatever. I know it sounds cool and all, but you're really just giving away a free percent, like a whole cut of your, all your money, bro. And it's like, if the guy's not really, if the manager, my fault, I don't mean to say guy, it could be a girl, whatever. Whoever that person is, if the manager isn't really helping you out and getting you these songs and getting you these records and getting you paid, bro, they, they don't deserve a percentage off anything you make, you know what I'm saying? So don't just be claiming anybody as your manager, bro, because you just, you just giving away free money, you know what I'm saying? All you really need is a lawyer to look over your contracts and a lawyer can negotiate for you. I mean, you just talk through your lawyer. Some of these producers really need a lawyer, not just because of that, but because you might have a situation where you're fucking with a, you're working with an artist and the artist might not pay you or you might not get a contract. And it's like, you would reach out to the lawyer and have him have the lawyer reach out to the team of the artist to figure out whatever it takes to just get the song cleared. You got a lot of these producers who are doing business, shitty business with no lawyer, and then they don't get paid the right way, and then they go on online or Twitter, and now they start talking down on an artist who has nothing to do with like clearing up any type of business. Like they have a whole team for that. You know what I'm saying? The artist isn't the one paying you out of his pocket. It's the label. So they have a whole team to take care of all that shit. So you don't got nobody on your team to help you. You're gonna kind of come off as that guy that's just like begging for his money and shit. So you gotta get a lawyer, bro. You gotta you gotta get yourself right, get your people's right, man. So I think it was my boy 20, he was telling me like, yo, when it comes to the music shit, this shit's kind of like a pizza. You come in with a whole pizza. You can't have all the pizza to yourself in order to go up, bro. You, just, you gotta get your lawyers, you gotta break him off a slice. Eventually, you're gonna have to get a manager, break him off a slice. You might get a pub deal, break them off a slice. You know what I'm saying? Like, somebody might help you get a record. You might have to break them off a slice. It really just comes down to having the most slices. You wanna make sure you're straight. You wanna make sure you have the most slices of your pizza. But just keep in mind, you can't have it all to yourself. You need to get the lawyers. You need to get the managers, help you negotiate shit like that. Another question I got is about, um, you know, collaborations, paying for collabs, stuff like that. If you should do them, if they're worth it. I'm gonna be honest with you, every person is different. You know what I'm saying? Every producer is different. You might uh, reach out to a producer who's down to do a collab with you and um, they're probably gonna do it. Most likely they will, I would assume they do it, but then you got the producers who you'll reach out to and they'll just completely scam you, bro. And then you got the producers who you'll reach out to to get a collab with, but they actually do have a lot of motion going on and you gotta kind of give them a little bit of time to get back to you because it's just, you know, they're really busy. That doesn't mean they gon they're not gonna do your collab, but um, it's gonna take a little bit, you know, people be moving around and shit. But on my time coming up, like I'm not anywhere near where I wanna be yet, but when I had no placements, when I didn't know nobody, like 
I used to reach out to a lot of producers and pay for a lot of collabs, man. I was like paying people like Chop Squad DJ for a collab, paying people like Young Land, Pyrex, like all types of people. I was putting up whatever money I can, bro. Like I would even try to collaborate with people like DY Crazy, shit like that. But I try to make it all worth it. It wasn't really about the beat for me. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people will pay for a collab and just expect their life to change within the next few weeks off that one collab off that two, three hundred dollars or whatever they sent, which makes no sense. That's not how things work. Cause you gotta keep in mind, these artists are using a whole bunch of beats. You know what I'm saying? They're going through a whole bunch of beats and I might be the producer that might send them like 50 to 100 beats a week. You know what I'm saying? You never know, these artists are getting hundreds and hundreds of beats a week. Just having one collab isn't gonna do too much. You know what I'm saying? But uh, some collabs could be worth it, man. I would advise you trying to lock in with producers in real life, bro. You know what I'm saying? I like working with producers better in real life instead of taking loops and shit. I even charge for sessions out here. Like I have people come to LA, come lock in with me in real life. We'll get like 10, 15 beats done. And then I'll send them all out. You know what I'm saying? I think it's, that's just a better way to collaborate instead of just putting all your money into one collab and hoping for the best. You know what I'm saying? It might be a producer who's making hundreds of beats and it's just, you can't expect too much off one collab. So it really just depends. You know what I'm saying? You gotta make them collabs worth it. It wasn't just about the beat for me. Like I made sure I got these guys numbers and I made sure like to travel and go to these guys' cities. I would reach out to them with the number they gave me, see if they were there, see if they had any sessions. One thing led to another. Was able to get in some sessions and you know, met new people, met new artists, producers, and it just, my network started expanding from that point on. You know what I'm saying? So collaborating with other producers and paying for collabs really helped me. You know what I'm saying? Um, helped my name get around. Eventually, as my name started getting bigger, some of these same people I would collab with would reach out to me and be like, yo, bro, I just heard your tag and missing so-and-so, so-and-so, a song with Future, a song for this. I'm like, yeah, bro, you know, I'm doing my thing. And it's just like, oh yeah, we should do some more shit. You know what I'm saying? One thing leads to another, so. Just keep doing your thing, bro. Collab with who you want. Best thing to invest into is yourself. So I just always felt like collabs and studio time and whatever it is, is always an investment to yourself. So another question I get a lot is like, you know, networking, how do you really network? What is networking? It's really just connecting with people. When it comes to networking, you want to kind of take your mind away from music and just think of trying to make friends. You know what I'm saying? When you go to a new school or something, like how do you make new friends? You introduce yourself, you get to know people, you talk to people, like that's what you want to do at these sessions. Don't be antisocial. Let people know who you are. Tell them your name. Ask them what they do. You might be sitting next to somebody in a session or even at a party and it's like, you wouldn't have known that was so-and-so's manager, so-and-so's A&R. They, they might be top executive at a label. You will never know. You will never know. Or they might have diamond plaques, platinum plaques, whatever it is. You never know until you actually speak up and talk to these people in real life. You know, tap in, get so-and-so's number, whatever it is. You know, stay consistent, bro. It's just all about making friends. You know what I'm saying? It's, you last in this shit when you have relationships, when you create bonds, you know, the long-term bonds where it's like, <clears throat> to the point where it's like, you can take a break from music. You can always come back to it because you still have these relationships with people. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's just all about, all about what networking is. You just want to tap in, make friends with people, be a cool person, you know, just be yourself. It's not, I feel like people, when it comes to music, people put this networking as such a, they're so robotic about it. And they're just like, oh, I gotta go network. I gotta do this. I gotta network. I gotta net, but they're not really networking. You know what I'm saying? You're thinking too hard about it. It's really just about going out, introducing yourself to people, meeting new people for the next time. And just like making new connections. It ain't on no like, I'm about to go to this place to network. Like just be a regular person, go meet these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got another question. Branding in 2023, how do I brand myself better in 2023? So uh, I think this is something uh, every producer could, um, you know, try to focus on or whatever it is, every artist, whatever it is, man, like <clears throat> social media, gotta be active on Instagram, gotta be active on a TikTok, Twitter, whatever it is, active on all platforms. People gotta always see your name, bro, when you post. Snapchat, whatever the fuck it is, anything. As you can tell, I'm trying to get back on my YouTube shit. So you got to stay consistent on the tube, bro. Because I'm telling you what people don't realize. Like Instagram is one thing, right? Instagram where everyone is where everyone's connected, this and that will do. But like YouTube is a whole nother audience, bro. If you can somehow like break the YouTube game and just get in the YouTube game, you all of a sudden get a whole new following, a whole new audience. Because you got to keep in mind, there's producers right now who are making over six figures on YouTube, selling kits and beats to people on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like no placements. You don't know them on Instagram. You don't, they just, they have a very good YouTube presence. You know what I'm saying? So YouTube, 
is gonna help a lot with the branding shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? So what you wanna do on YouTube? Tutorials, stuff like this, you know, like whatever it is, man, do whatever, vlogs, anything. Just people gotta see that you're actually working, bro, because it's like, if you're not pushing yourself, for example, if your family's always asking like what you're up to, that means you're not doing enough like to show them that you're working on what you're working on. That goes for anybody, not just your family. If you're a producer and you don't have no pictures of you in the studio, no beats online, no nothing. If I go on your page, nothing on there tells me that you're a producer and you're actually working. I'm not going to have belief in you that you actually do this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just be like, oh, this is just another Instagram account. Because all you have when you brand yourself and try to reach a bigger audience, all you have is your social medias and your account. So the first thing people are going to look at is your page. Be like, yo, who is this kid? If you only have beat snippets and no pictures of you in the studio, no professional pictures, no songs, no pictures with other artists, no whatever, anything to make you look like you stand out or you're a person, bro, like people aren't gonna follow you and try to tap in. So, you know, that just goes with branding. You gotta put your face to it, put your face to the name. Be out there, let people know you're actually here, bro. Like, don't let people forget about you in this shit because it's easy to let these people forget about you, especially after you after you build a brand. It's very easy to let these people forget about you. It's very easy to lose the motion. So stay on top of that. So I'm gonna do this last question, then I'm just gonna go in a few like pieces of advice for y'all before my fucking camera dies. So somebody asking about how to go about placements and getting a contract, how does that work, clearing up a placement. So this is usually how it goes. If you're dealing with an artist who signs a label, whoever got the song placed, it's their job to let know whoever else is on the beat, you know what I'm saying? that we got a song, you know what I'm saying? Like otherwise, and they're just doing you dirty. One of y'all was to send me loops or something, right? And I was to get a place with this artist and you know, they send me a contract, everything. It's my job to let that loop maker know like, hey, we got one, you know what I'm saying? Um, we're gonna loop you in on the email, on the email thread, whatever it is with you. Most of the time they're gonna be reached out to by whoever the manager is or whoever's taking care of the uh, business behind the song or the project or whatever. I should reach out to you asking you if you have a manager or something. You're gonna send you an email with the contract. It's gonna have like a first offer, pretty much type of contract deal standard. They'll pretty much tell you what kind of advance you'll be having, what kind of um, splits you'll be having, stuff like that. Ask you if anybody else is on the beat, including the loop maker, whoever it is. At this point, you would get a lawyer and get your lawyer on the email and then talk with the lawyer and then your lawyer will negotiate everything for you, make sure everything's right. You know what I'm saying? So. That's usually how things go. I mean, I know you guys might watch YouTube videos all day on how to do this shit, what it is about the business side of things, but it's like, you will never really know like until you're actually in it, until you deal with your first contracts and clear your first songs and like get, get paid for your first song and shit like that. So it's like, just give it time. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 2023. I think we could all realize like how easier it is to actually make shit happen now as a producer. And it's like not just all about the beats, man. You just gotta go out there, link up with the artists. Don't get too tied up and try to impress all these other producers and collaborate with all these other producers. Focus on the artists, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, we're producers and we're here to serve the artists. And we, I mean, we make beats for the artists to use, so it's good. we gotta make sure that all these artists are using the beats. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't about trying to get the loops to this producer, even though I mean, it's nothing wrong with collaborating, but it's just like people put too much focus into trying to work with other producers when it's like you should be focused on the artist. Because if you rely too much on the producers, then it's like, what are you going to do without them? Like, you have no artists to work with now. So it's like, got to have emotion, got to have your own emotion, have your own artist to link up with, you know what I'm saying? A couple things I want to dive into. Don't get too stuck on just making beats, bro. Like, best thing I ever learned to do was engineer. Because now I could just meet an artist and tap in with, and it's just like, let him know I got a session and when he comes through, I won't need a, I won't need an engineer or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I could just engineer myself. I won't ever have to rely on an engineer. Spend times where I've been in a session. I've been waiting on an engineer. Engineer was late or whatever it is. And it's just like, or the engineer wasn't even doing a good job. So it's like, if you don't like the way something's done, do that shit yourself. So it's like, I'm gonna make sure I get these records done regardless. Don't get too stuck on just making beats. Right now, I've been trying to just dip and dabble with Photoshop and editing my own videos. I'm definitely gonna learn how to edit my own videos and shit so I can just do more YouTube content, you know, TikTok, shit like that. That's important. Yeah, man, just uh, keep going crazy. I know shit can get discouraging sometimes, but it's like, you gotta understand what we doing as producers, like, this isn't normal. Like, not anybody could just do this kind of stuff. Like, this is like, you have a skill. You know what I'm saying? Just keep going. It's just perfect your skill, master your skill. You're going to be straight. You'll never go broke.
it'll, it'll get to the point where it's just like you're so talented you make the right moves you link up with the right people and it's like next, next thing you know shit's just going just get yourself out there bro that's the main key that's all i could really tell y'all that's the main key that's what made it happen for me nothing started popping off for me until i started traveling bro until i started meeting people like these people gotta feel you bro like these people you gotta really like put your face to this shit that's the only way then people start to take you serious because like you got to keep in mind like people get so many instagram dms and it's just like you're kind of just an instagram account until you meet them in real life once you travel the world you realize how easy it is to really link up with people and it's just like this world is way smaller than it seems like you got this you know what i'm saying it's like okay i know what to do from here i should have been doing this shit a long time ago boom now you're traveling in new york atlanta miami LA, wherever, bro, to get that work done, bro. So just keep that in mind. You wanna just, I know not everybody's capable of traveling and shit, but bro, like, I know a lot of producers in Europe will hit me up about, like, yo, how can I work with people? I'm trying to work with American producers, this and that, bro. I know so many other Europeans that, like, go super crazy with the beats and are getting placements or this. Try fucking with European artists, bro. Like, don't be like, don't be settling on working with one artist, bro, because you're going to let all these other opportunities slip up with all these other artists. So that's just a few things I wanted to touch up on and shit, you know what I'm saying? But new drum kit coming out real soon, probably in the next week or something. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for the YouTube. It's about to go crazy. Um, Let's go crazy.